emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. If you've painted a model using an airbrush, then you know all about pre-shading, the idea of putting down a dark colour to mark panel lines and recesses before you paint over the main colour of the model, over the top, and it shows through as a shadow. This isn't airbrushed. This is all brush painting. How can you do pre-shading without an airbrush? Watch on. What will you need for this awesome effect? You will need quite a small list of things. You'll need a paint, and another paint. You'll need two paints, one slightly darker than the other. Now it doesn't matter what brand of paint you use, what colours you use. I happen to have picked uh, Skaven Blight Dinge and Mechanica Standard Grey, purely because this one is a grey colour and this one is ever so slightly lighter. So all you need are two paints, one slightly lighter than the other. Go for whatever colour you want, green, blue, pink, orange, doesn't matter. One needs to be ever so slightly lighter than the other one. You'll need something to do a shade or a wash with. I'm using Citadel's Norm Oil because I'm doing these greys, these are dark greys. A black shadow colour works really well. And this is to put shadows around recesses and to tint the whole thing and make it a bit darker. Uh, I say I'm using the shade, uh, Norm Oil. Uh, if you're doing greens or reds, you might find that, for example, Agrax Earthshade is a nicer colour to use. Or other products are available outside of the Citadel brand. You can make your own shades using inks and Pledge or Future Clear, or you can use glaze mediums like Lamian Medium or AK or Vallejo's uh, glaze mediums. They're just paints without pigments. You can use those to make your own shades. So I'm just using a dark, this in case it's a dark black, or sort of very dark, dark grey shade. You'll also need the thing you're painting. You'll need a brush. Doo -doo -doo. Now for a brush, you want something nice and soft. If it's a Citadel brush, you want to use a dry brush. But any other brand, you want to use something that's soft and got a chisel edge and square. It doesn't have to be this small. It can be big or small. I'm using small because it's a bit more manageable. Uh, this is an Army Painter small dry brush. But basically, you want something like that. It's soft and floppy. Uh, but it's chisel edge, and that's the important bit. It's square or chisel edge. You don't want a rounded brush. Well, it'd be fine. It's just easier to use a flat one. Some tissue, and that's it. That's all we need. So we want to fake an airbrush finish. Now here is the piece we've done. I have primed it. I primed it in black I'm using Chaos Black Spray. I'm assuming, again, you haven't got an airbrush. Uh, I then brush painted over it with the Skaven Blight Dinge. And I wasn't particularly careful. I used thin, thin my paints and used two thin coats, obviously. <laughs> Uh, but it wasn't the best finish, you can see there it's not exactly a smooth finish. And then I gave it a really heaped on coat of Norm Oil, and I used a big fat shade brush for that, I just slapped it on. What did I do, Ted? Slap it on! Yes, I slapped it on, and I wasn't careful, I just put it everywhere. And that gave it this nice, dirty, filthy look. But you can see there in the light, it's patchy and uneven, because I, do, I wasn't careful, I just slapped it all over. Now we need to bring this back. So. And this is why you don't need to worry if your first brush coat colour coat is like a bit, a little bit rough around the edges, like a little bit, it's not 100% airbrush smooth. When you're brushing paint, you'll never get a smooth airbrush finish, but you can distract the viewer from spotting that and you can get a shaded airbrush effect. Now what I'm going to try and do here is reproduce a pre-shaded effect, which is where on a model you would paint your base colour or you paint a primer colour, for example, like a white or something like that. You then use black around all the recesses and areas, like a black or dark colour, and you'd airbrush that on to make some shadows. And then you'd paint over the colour you wanted, like the dark grey, for example, lightly and build it up so that where there was less paint, you'd have the dark shadows where you painted the pre-shaded lines. I'm trying to replicate that. So all I need to do is take my Mechanica Standard Grey, which is the lighter of the two paints. I will get a small amount. On the brush, doo -doo -doo -doo, not much. I'll take most of it off. Now you've seen me do dry brushing before, so you know how this works. You want to get most of this off. And the trick here is to knock the camera, first of all. The trick here is you want really lots of the paint removed, and you're gonna go in, but very, very lightly. And what I'm gonna try and do is focus on the inside of this panel here, not around these recesses, not, not really towards the edge. I'm gonna go very light, and instead of going like this to hit the edges, I'm going to use small circular motions. Now you're never supposed to push a brush like that, but a dry brush is different. You can do it with a dry brush, because dry brushes don't need to keep a point. So I'm just very, very lightly, almost no pressure whatsoever, 
doing little tiny circles and this is why a small brush is best because when you first go on there'll be almost no paint on there at all but as you keep doing these little circles it just builds up and if you stay away from the edge as best you can and focus on the middle you can go this way if you want to get a smaller footprint for the brush the paint will build up and I'll get a bit more paint now it won't last long and this is a slow process it's not a fast process you've got to take your time you've got to go gently and you've got to be really soft and gentle with it get, again get most of the paint off on the brush you really want nothing and just go in I find that kind of angle is quite nice to get a big flat surface area start off in the middle you'll generally have more paint on the brush when you first put it down so start off in the middle of a panel just so that it ends up where the highlight is you can work your way around like this I'm, I'm staying away from this this strap here that I've put on because I want there to be a bit of shadow there and I'll just work my way a little bit down you can do some brushing motions just to pull down areas a little bit there and I'm just focusing in the middle again and if you want to go really light you can put a little bit of pressure on and just go to town in the middle there and then what you end up with is a panel where you've got the original dark grey colour covered in the null null around the edge you've got but a little bit a little bit lined by the light grey by the Mechanicus grey you've now got the paint building up as it gets towards the middle even lighter and then around the back here where I can't really get the brush I've just kind of faded it slightly and done done a bit and then done a bit more but in the middle and then a bit more in the middle and just faded it so that by the time it gets around the back it's just the original grey and the null oil so what you've got there is this much lighter panel that one's been done before much lighter panel but it's got some shading around the edge so I'll go and get the rest of this done and then I'll show you exactly what it'll look like when you've finished and this is how you can fake an airbrush pre-shading finish without using an airbrush and with that done your model looks a lot more interesting now it looks a lot more almost airbrushed with that pre-shading look now you can take it further uh, what I'm going to do now before I go ahead and paint all the other details like these leather straps the box and the gold aquila and all the bits of metals and stuff is I'm going to take up some dawnstone which is another color it's another light gray I'm going to give it a good shake I'm going to do exactly so I'm going to get the brush tiny bit of paint on the brush I'm going to get most of that off now this is going to be very very subtle because what I want to do now is just focus on the middle of panels very very lightly and just very slowly build it up similar as before but I'm focusing in the middles and this is just for an extra layer of highlighting it's probably not even going to come out on camera I'm just going to work in the middles once I've done those I will then get some and just quickly flick it over the edges just to pick out the edges just like this so I can then get some some definition on those edges so I'll get that done and again it's just in the middle of the panels just to make a little highlight and just to go around the edges so I'll get some more paint on because I've just run out now we are using very little paint here getting most of it off so this may take a little bit longer you have to be more 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 you have to be more more careful wow I'm talking nonsense you have to be more careful than you were before and go in little circular motions again the trick is to go in at about 45 degrees like that this is why I like the angled chisel brushes because I can go in and get them like that and just make my little circles happy little circles now I'll build this up slowly it will take a while at violins it is done and there you have it now I just use the three colors there you can do more you can go lighter and lighter if you want to if you want a really bright highlight just remember each time you go to a lighter color focus more and more on the center of each panels remember the aim is to get the darker and shaded colors around the edges of panels and the lighter highlights in the middle and then just work your way around slowly and you're done now little bit of a reality check it looks like an airbrush finish but obviously it isn't an airbrush finish if you look at it in the light there are still some patchy areas where the shade hasn't been covered up by the dry brushing and you've got some sort of specular highlights there it looks a bit weird don't panic don't panic at all because once you've done more weathering over the top if you're doing weathering or if you're not doing weathering once you've put a matte varnish on top of this a nice matte ultra matte varnish over the top that will all go away it'll look nice and smooth and it will then have that proper nice smooth airbrush finish it'll never be a hundred percent as soft and delicate as an airbrush finish 
but you brushed it. It's never going to be like that, but it still will look fantastic. And most people won't know. One other thing to keep in mind as well, while you are brush painting and you're not going to be using an airbrush, when you've got the first base colour down, like I did the uh, Skaven Blight Dinge, it might look a bit rubbish, especially when you put the shade or your, your wash over the top. It might look really rubbish, again, because it's patchy and it's a flat colour with a shade over the top and it looks a bit pants. Don't panic. As soon as you start doing this dry brushing, it all comes to life. It all pops. When things are halfway complete, they often look terrible, but you have to stick with it. That's the thing I've learned doing this and doing art over the last 30, 40 years. Although things may look really, really ass halfway through, as soon as you get towards the end and you start doing the last few things to make it all pop, it will pop and you'll go, oh, now I get it. So stick with it. Even at the early stages of doing this, it may look like complete and utter garbage. The dry brushing will really make it pop. So there you go. That's how to do this effect, this pre-shading effect without an airbrush. So if you've never had an airbrush, maybe it's a bit too expensive or you can't afford it or you're a bit too young perhaps, or maybe you've tried an airbrush in the past and didn't like it and don't want to go back, or maybe you're like me, you're fully conversant in how to use an airbrush, but since learning to brush paint, you really can't be bothered getting the airbrush out because why, when you can just have fun brush painting, that's also a possibility. So if any of those is you, you now have a way to get that almost pre-shaded airbrush look just using your good old brushy brush. I must clean that brush, it's terrible, look at it. Your brushy brush brushes and your paints. And again, it's not restricted to Citadel paints, any water-based acrylics this will work with. Maybe not Ammo by me because they work a bit differently, but your Vallejos, your AKs, your Army Painters, pretty much most, you can do this. Just go slow, go careful, get yourself some nice angly angly brushes, work at a funky angle and just go in slow circles. If you want to get the edges, you go back and forth like that. If you want to get blending, you go in slow, delicate circles with no pressure and almost nothing on the brush and build it up. So there you go. I hope that's been helpful. That's going to do us for this little how-to video. Uh, if you would like more information on these Army Painter brushes, they are really, really good. If you'd like to get some for yourself, you can get the Mega Brush set. Uh, there's a link in my description below, some affiliate links. Uh, please do go and have a look. I earn a little tiny bit of income every time you click through to one of those and purchase something through that link. So go and have a look and see. Helps out this channel and you'll get yourself some awesome, awesome brushes. Don't forget, of course, there's the Model Makers Boom Hut, the best model making group on the entire interwebs. Star star no disclaimer it is the best group on the interwebs really friendly group uh, there's no snarking and bitching allowed we police it very strongly against that uh, it's a safe zone you can show off your stuff get lots of feedback make lots of friends it's a really awesome little model making family so do go and check it out and don't forget of course if you'd like to support this channel as always you can do at my patreon page patreon.com forward slash model making guru I uh, depend on my patrons to keep me going. It keeps the channel going, keeps the lights on, and I love them dearly for doing that. And I love everybody, not just my patrons. I love you all. You are all my favourite children. Oh. Anyway, that's going to wrap this video up. So thank you so much for watching. Do take care of yourselves. Go and try this out. Give it a go. Go slowly. Go gently. Become awesome. Take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go wiggle the brush awesomely. And until next time, adios amoebas.